on a cobweb afternoon in a room full of emptiness by a freeway i confess i was lost in the pages of a book full of death reading how we'll die alone and if we're good we'll lay to rest anywhere we want to go Hey, what's up, YouTubers, and welcome back to the Todd E. Walnuts channel. Joined by my two lovely co-hosts, Hannah and Heidi, and uh, Frank and Sammy and Dean. And we're chilling in the Walnuts compound on this rainy, kind of chilly day, Saturday afternoon. And I thought I would record a video today and I uh, got some stuff piling up here and I got a little stack of goodies here that I picked up at a Dollar Tree. I'll tell you about those. Got a couple of games. We'll talk about that too. I think I'll save those for the very end. I got a little stack of Blu-rays. I got a couple stacks here of some Blue Underground DVDs that I picked up off of Amazon. They've been on sale. We'll talk about those. I got another couple stacks of DVDs here. Actually, uh, I got another stack at the the very end. Those are Easter horror movies. I do enjoy the holiday-themed horror movies, so I picked up a couple of those. I'll share those with you guys. Uh, and also, I do get the same question quite a few times on my channel. People want to know what type of protection I use on my movies. And I'll go through and talk to you guys about a couple of companies that I deal with. I want to shout them out. I want to get the information out to you guys so you can take advantage of their, um, their great deals that they have. And you want to make sure that you do protect your movies. So we will talk about that too in this video. So stay tuned. Um, we will get into all this stuff and more. And let's, uh, let's jump into it here. Okay, uh, so let's get into the first stack. This is from the Dollar Tree. Now, about two weeks ago, I had to get a, a prescription refilled at a, a CVS pharmacy. And right next door to the pharmacy is a Dollar Tree. And I hadn't been in there in, in a minute, so I just wanted to see what kind of movies they had. Uh, and the, the majority of this pile was from that first store that I went into. And when you see what I got here in this pile, uh, it intrigued me. And so I went on a little bit of a journey. And I went on a, a Dollar Tree hunt that day. But unfortunately, just the, the first store was really fruitful. The rest of them were kind of duds. So I'll show you what I got. Uh, I was hoping after that first dollar store that I was going to make out like a bandit. But unfortunately, I didn't. And what I was seeing was a lot of the same movies that I saw two years ago. So they're just kind of, it's just the same old stock that's sitting around on the shelves in there collecting dust. And they don't really have any new titles that they're peppering in. Um, so the first one here is called Shark Night from the director of The Final Destination. This is a DVD. Um, haven't watched it yet. Anytime I can get a horror movie for $1.25, I'll grab it. Uh, of course, unless I have it already. But I don't think I have this one yet. Uh, but that's Shark Night. So uh, the next one, I couldn't believe this. Now, I'm a, a big Ben Stiller fan. I think he's pretty good. He's pretty funny. But I haven't watched many of his movies in like 20 years, you know. Um, 
Meet the Parents was really good, and he had some pretty good ones. I've never seen Zoolander, but when I saw this at a Dollar Tree, I grabbed it. This is the Blu-ray steelbook of Zoolander, and it also comes with, uh, I guess, the wig or a hat that he wears in the movie. And it's uh, pretty in really good condition. I mean, the steelbook looks flawless. The box has a little bit of a ding to it. I don't care much about that. Uh, but to get a steelbook at a Dollar Tree, I, I grabbed it. And that's what got me excited. And that's why I went on the little journey that I went on. And unfortunately, it didn't, re it didn't uh, reward me at all. But I also got this. It's a triple feature from Universal. It has King Kong, King Kong versus Godzilla, and King Kong Escapes on DVD. I didn't own any of these movies. Well, I, I own the King Kong. This is the Peter Jackson King Kong. But I don't own the 1963 King Kong versus Godzilla. And I didn't own the 1968 King Kong Escapes. So I was glad to pick that up for a buck and a quarter. I I don't know if it's... I think it's all on one disc. And so King Kong, the Peter Jackson King Kong, is three hours, eight minutes. Uh, King Kong versus Godzilla is an hour and 31. And King Kong Escapes is an hour and 36. So that's... Um, quick math that's over six hours worth of movies and if it's on one disc which i think it is it feels like it's one disc uh, that's pretty compressed and it's probably going to affect the picture quality i'm thinking but for movies like this who cares i mean these have better editions by now anyway on on blu-ray and 4k so the next one is a, a show that I never got into, but I always liked the Avatar cartoon. This is not the James Cameron Avatar. This was uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. And this is a spinoff or a, uh, not really a sequel, but I guess spinoff is the only word I can really think of right now, of um, Avatar The Last Airbender. And this is called The Legend of Korra. This is book three on Blu-ray. And I I hadn't gotten into this show yet, but for a dollar, I had to grab it. This show came out in 2014. It says up here that it's from the creators of Avatar, The Last Airbender. Uh, comes a continuation of the legendary story. Uh, and then you got bonus features. And I mean, it, it's just really cool to be able to get this for a dollar which it's actually a dollar and a quarter now but this one I owned already um, but I, I think I paid over twenty dollars for this at Best Buy years ago and my the slipcover I had for mine was a little bit damaged but this one was in perfect pristine condition with the slipcover this is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack of the animated movie Dragon Age, Dawn of the Seeker. I put it in a bag already just to kind of keep that slipcover pristine. And again, stick around till the end of the video and I'll talk a little bit about the protection for the movies. But this one has a sticker that I didn't have on mine. It says, featuring Desire for Need performed by Seether and remixed by Roger Sanchez and downloadable Dragon Age comic book, digital comic book. So that's really cool. I mean, for a dollar, and it is region A and B, and it's a Blu-ray DVD combo, like I said. This was a, a really excellent game, and I remember the movie being pretty good, too. I'm glad to have this one again. This one is a show that I've never watched, but I'm aware of it. I've, I've heard of it before. I just haven't seen any of it. And this is a series, uh, season one of Preacher on Blu-ray. Comes in a thick, uh, fat pack here. 
also comes with a digital HD ultraviolet code, but it could be very well be expired by now. But uh, if anybody knows about this show, let me know. I wanted to grab it for a buck, get the whole season. And it says it's sharply written, brilliantly cast, intense, bloody, and often very funny. I thought this was kind of a, I thought it was kind of a horror-themed show, but I don't think it is. It looks like it's more comic book. A uh, small town in Texas who inhabits a mysterious entity that allows him to develop a highly unconventional power. A dark journey that is unlike any other. You get Blu-ray exclusive bonus materials. And let's see if, if it says uh, approximately 471 minutes running time. So you get a whole season of a television show on Blu-ray for a buck. And like I said, most of these were at the very first store, so I was thinking, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail it, but I, I didn't. After this, there it was a lot of garbage. And then I picked up this one on Blu-ray. It's called Tidal Wave. It looks like it's a, a Japanese disaster type movie, and I, I enjoy these generally. They're pretty good. Put up by Magnet, so they're a very high quality company. They have really good stuff. Uh, it's rated R. It's a movie from 2009, and uh, I think I said Japanese, but it's uh, Korean uh, here on the back. It's a two-hour movie, and it's rated R for disaster images and language. And it is in English language. It's also in Korean language. There's a, a bridge there. Tribute. Uh, um, unfortunate that... Uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in uh, Baltimore uh, had that disaster um, a week or so ago. And uh, positive vibes to the, the remaining family and friends who lost loved ones. So that was my little haul for the Dollar Tree. So we're going to move on now to the Blu-ray pile that I picked up. So this little pile here, uh, like I said, I've been grabbing a lot of DVDs lately, and that's uh, I've been doing that on purpose. I've been trying to fill in some of the holes in my DVD collection. I also wanted to grab some of these Blu-rays here, and these are very dinosaur and sci-fi heavy in this little pile here. The first one is called The Land Unknown. Put up by Kino. The movie is from 1957. It is uh, 78 minutes running time, and the movie was released by Kino in 2019. But I love, love these black and white sci-fi movies from the 50s. And I, I love dinosaur movies, too. So really glad to pick this up. This was an Amazon purchase, and I got it for a pretty good price. This had been on my wish list uh, for a long time. And I try to strike when the iron's hot when they go on sale for a couple bucks or whatever, and then I grab them. And uh, they're pretty affordable anyway, but when they go on sale, it's even sweeter to grab it. So that's the Land Unknown. The next one is called The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. And I think this one is a Warner Brothers movie. Another sci-fi creature feature film. This one, I let me see if I can find the year, 1953. Another black and white sci-fi picture from the 50s. Now, I, I believe the movie's in black and white. I haven't watched it yet. Judging by the stills, it looks black and white, but if you look at the image in the back, it, it looks color. Um, sometimes they just do that for, uh, you know, advertising, I guess. Uh, but I'm assuming, though, that it is black and white, which uh, is not an issue at all to me. And like I said, I, I, I really love these uh, 50s black and white sci-fi movies. Another Warner Brothers movie, The Valley of the Guanji. This is from the Archive Collection. Check out that cover.
Now this one looks like it may be colorized. It's a movie from 1969, so it very well most likely is color. And you can see that they have these stop motion. Uh, this movie is rated G. And this is a Ray Harryhausen movie. He was a, everybody knows Ray Harryhausen by now, but he was a special effects wizard, guru, giant, legend, whatever you want to call him. He was all of those things. And uh, you get a couple of bonus features here too. You get Return to the Valley, recounts the making of the film with producer, creator of special effects, Ray Harryhausen. So that will be a really nice, uh, fun watch bonus feature. The Valley of the Guanji, I believe is how you pronounce it, from 1960, did I say 69 or 68? 69. The next one here is called When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth, also from the Warner Brothers Archive Collection. Now this one has a little bit of a history to it. Stick around for this pile. And I will tell you the history of the movie. There's a kind of a rare DVD, and I'll give you the backstory about that. But this is the Blu-ray upgrade. And this one also did come out in, in 1969. Produced by, uh, directed by Val Guest. And it says, um, so this one kind of tried to cash in on the 1 million years BC uh, movie. This was a Hammer Studios picture. Uh, after Raquel Welch conquered the screen in 1 million years BC, Hammer Studios followed up with When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth, written and directed by Val Guest, uh, based on a story by J.G. Ballard. Um, so Santa was rescued, not Santa, uh, Santa, S-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, rescued from ritual sacrifice by Terra, a member of a rival tribe. Her survival coincides with the mysterious formation of a new fire in the sky, the moon. Santa's old tribe blames her for this affront to the sun. Santa flees their wrath and Terra follows. So they have to kind of escape. And then not only are they running from tribes, but they're also trying to survive some of these giant monsters and creatures that are roaming the lands out there. Uh, really glad to have this. And this is an upgrade. I also have a DVD of this movie in this pile here as well. This one I picked up from... I don't know if you guys are familiar with Grave Face. He's a, uh, he owns a, I would call it a museum, a horror museum slash store. Uh, and this is his, from his line. This is Wood Chipper Massacre. This is a, I believe this is a partner of Vinegar Syndrome. It has the same kind of high quality, thick uh, slipcover that goes over the top of the movie here. Um, so there is the cover. Kind of an odd style of art. But it's a, a very thick, um, high quality slip cover, just like you would get at Vinegar Syndrome. And then here's the movie. This is from Terror Vision. The movie came out in 1988. Uh, it is a shot-on-video horror movie, and it's actually it's uh, one of the better shot-on-video movies. I happen to be a fan of the SOV movies. A lot of people aren't, just because of the kind of the lower production quality. Uh, but this one's actually one of the, the better ones, I think. If you haven't seen this one, check it out. It's pretty good, in my opinion. And the last one <clears throat> is this one. This is also Kino. This is a movie called Dinosaurus. Check out that cover. 
I love that. That's really nice. This is a caveman dinosaur movie from 1960. And you can see some of the stills up there. Some more stop motion dinosaur goodness. You can see some caveman goodness there. This is a 4K restoration of the movie. Never owned this before, never, never seen it before. Looking forward to popping these in. And so when I, I go in little spurts like this and when I, I'm constantly collecting and I'm constantly looking for deals and I'm constantly surveying different websites, looking for sales. Um, I kind of go in with a plan when I'm buying my movies and this one obviously is very dinosaur heavy. So if anybody has seen any of these and you want to talk about them in the comments, feel free to do so. Just make sure that you keep it spoiler free, please. Okay, gang is still here. Everybody's in chill mode. Feeling pretty good. I didn't sleep good right last night and I didn't sleep good the night before. I've been really, really struggling with my sleep. And Thursday night going into Friday, I only got three hours of sleep and I was dragging on Friday. But I made it through. I only slept a couple, about four hours last night. I will talk more about that later, but I was thinking about live streaming tonight, Alone in the Dark, but I may skip this night uh, just to kind of catch up on some rest. But we'll talk more about that later in this video, because right now we're going to get into these two piles of the Blue Underground movies that I've been picking up on DVD. Um, the first one, now these movies, I do most of these movies, I would say probably like 85 to 90% of the movies I'm about to show you, I own already on Blu-ray. Some of these I had owned on DVD at one point years ago and got rid of them and I wish I didn't. So I'm trying to get some of those back. This is the perfect time for me to do that because... Amazon has been selling these Blue Underground DVDs for really good prices. I don't know if it's a sale or if it's just their normal price. But if you look for some of these Blue Underground DVDs on like eBay, uh, some of them are like 15, 20 bucks, which to me is pretty high for a DVD. Even though these are all out of print and they're collector's items, you're better off getting a Blu-ray at that point if you're going to pay 20 bucks. But if you're like a completist or a collector, you want to have both the Blu-ray and the DVD. And if you can get these for like 10 bucks, to me, that's a steal. So that's why I got so many Blu-ray, Blue Underground uh, DVDs. So this is the Snuff Special Edition. I also ordered the Snuff. You guys may remember it came in like a, almost like a paper bag looking cover, like a, a crinkly paper bag. And it's made to look like it was a real movie, a real snuff movie that was put out in like a low quality, you know, kind of like a, a, a bootleg type deal. Um, and if you look here on the back, they kind of tout, they kind of market this movie as such, but it's obviously it's not a real snuff movie. The actors and actresses who dedicated their lives to make this film were never seen or heard from again. A movie from 1976. I never owned this edition, but I really like it. And I always wanted to get it, so now I do have it. And I also did reorder the the brown paper bag edition. I don't have it yet, so that will be in my next update video, probably next month. And that one I did own before, now it's just a repurchase. But I'm very glad to have this edition here of Snuff. Um, very low budget. Um, and... It's made to look like a snuff movie. I don't know if you guys are aware what a snuff movie is, but a snuff movie is supposed to be a movie where actors and actresses really do die in the movies and their deaths are filmed. Um, obviously, this is not, and that's very much against the law. Supposedly, there are movies out there on the black market that are real snuff movies, but this one definitely is not. So... Nothing to worry about there. The next one here, I have never owned this one on DVD. I do have it on a Blu-ray double feature. I believe it's Rats and Hell of the Living Dead. I could be wrong about that, 
but this one does come in on a double feature on Blu-ray by Blue Underground. But I wanted to pick it up on DVD as a standalone. I'm not going to talk too much more about certain ones I will, but I mean, I have a lot of stuff to show and I don't want this to be a three hour video. So this one I've never owned before. I've never seen this one before. So I was really glad to grab this one. This is an Italian giallo film called The Killing Hour. And I honestly, I don't know anything about this one. I've, I've never seen it before, but I, I was glad to pick it up and add it to the collection. And I'm going to be watching this one very soon. This is the unrated edition of it. It's a movie from 1982. So it's a little bit later in the game for the giallo movies. But that doesn't mean it's, you know, any less... Um, entertaining as some of the you know earlier giallo from the 70s but because um, um, I'm trying to think here some of the more modern ones Argento had quite a few of the giallo movies going into the 80s so it wasn't quite a dead genre at that point but it just wasn't really in the heyday in the 80s but thanks to Argento, it did stay alive for a while. Here's another one. Um, I believe I also own this one on DVD from Anchor Bay. And I own this one on Blu-ray from Blue Underground. Now, some of you, probably most of you know that Blue Underground is an offshoot or a subsidiary of Anchor Bay. Uh, Blue Underground, in my opinion, had the better horror movies. They, they both had about the same horror movie, you know, entertainment. But what Blue Underground had more than Anchor Bay was uh, some of the Italian um, horror movies and the Italian slashers and, and the giallo films and the uh, Poliziotteschi uh, movies, the police uh, crime movies. So this one is a creature feature that takes place in New York City in the early 80s, 1982 to be exact. It's a Larry Cohen picture. Most of you guys have seen this already. Um, the Blu-ray looks really good. I wanted to get this DVD. That cover is amazing. I, I love this cover and I was glad to pick that one up. Here's another one I own on Blu-ray. This is Stage Fright by Michele Suave. This is a great slasher movie. This is the special edition DVD. This one is a good one. It's not talked about enough, in my opinion. It's from 1987. If you like Italian slasher movies, this one is a, it's a hidden gem. More and more people are becoming, you know, hip to this movie, or are becoming aware of it. But if you haven't seen that one, check it out. Here's one I own on Blu-ray from 88 Films, which is a, a UK company from England. This one is called Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye. That's a title for you right there. And you can see the tagline at the top says, Gory, Stylish, Fun. And even though I've owned this one on Blu-ray for years now, I have still not watched it, so... It's a movie from 1973. This is another one of those uh, giallo Italian uh, whodunit crime slashers. I really love the Italian movies. It says it's an amazing film with a wicked sense of humor. That's a great cover, though. And the next one... I own this one on Blu-ray and DVD, and I also own the VHS of this one. But I own a different DVD, and I'll see if I can dig that one out really quick after I show you this one. This is a zombie film called Shockwaves. This one has a pretty good cast. Uh, Peter Cushing and John Carradine in a, in a low-budget zombie movie. That should tell you something right there. This one was pretty good. There's uh, Peter Cushing right there always great. This is the unrated edition of it. Uh, Brooke Adams is in here. She played in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And you get some bonus materials here. The audio commentary and interviews. Those are always great. 
So this is a, a World War II zombie horror movie. Let me pause it really quick and I'll see if I can pull out the other DVD and Blu-ray. Okay, so the one on the right is the one I just showed you, the one I just got. The one on the left here is one that I've had for years. And this one was called The Deep End of Horror Shockwaves. This was the first pressing of it. It came in a black case. Nowadays, for the most part, they do come in clear cases. Some of them still do come in black cases. But I'm going to see the difference here on the back. You can see that they, obviously, there are some differences. I'm going to see if I can find the year this was released by Blue Underground. So this one came out in 2003 by Blue Underground. And this one came out in 2014 by Blue Underground. This one has the disc, has the insert, and this one did not come with, uh, actually it's still sealed, but I believe that it does not have an insert. These re-releases do not have inserts, as far as I know. And then this one was also called the Special Edition, and I believe that's because it has a little more of the bonus materials there. You can see that box if you want to pause it and read it compared to the box here. It's a little bit smaller, so you do get more bonus materials for the newer release of it. To be honest, I, I like this one better. It has that more old school feel, but I still like that one a lot too. And then here is the Blu-ray from Blue Underground. Comes with this nice, beautiful slipcover. And this one was released in 2014 as well. So it looks like they probably, uh, when they re -re or when they released this Blu-ray, they re-released the DVD at the same time. That's probably what happened. Now this slipcover is a little bit snug. I'm going to try to pull it off really quick. I don't want to damage it. And I didn't really want to pause the video anymore for now. I'm going to have to. Sometimes the fucker wants to fight you. So here we go. We got the uh, slipcover off here. It's a really nice addition. It's a tight slipcover, but just be careful with it. That's what the insert there looks like. So I've spent enough time on shock waves, but it's, um, it's a worthy watch. It's a worthy buy. If you've never seen it, it's even worth a blind buy. It's cheap enough to grab it, so... Check it out. Okay, so the next one here is called Mad Dog Killer. This one I also own on Blu-ray from 88 Films. I've never owned this DVD. Glad to fill in that missing, you know, that missing section on my uh, Blue Underground DVD collection. And this one was also called Beast with a Gun. Stars Helmet Burger, who was a very strange very very strange man he was a german actor uh i believe he was considered a sex symbol in the 70s 60s even maybe uh he was a homo he was a he, he was a cock hound uh but he also liked women but this guy used to date his the director of this movie what was his name uh let me see i want to make sure that i get that right I, I don't want to say for sure if that was the director of this movie, but I know that he had a very long relationship with a man who was a director from a lot of the films that he was in. And uh, he ended up, he died, I think, a year or two ago at the age of like 78 or something. Um, I thought he was a decent enough actor. Uh, this movie's from 1977. I just noticed too that there's a kind of a little nick. Oh, it looks like it's just kind of like, a, looks like it's glue from like a glue dot or something, but there was nothing on there. I'm not sure what that's from, but probably from some of the packing material that uh, Amazon uses. And then here's another excellent slasher. I, I really like this one a lot. I was on this one for a long time, and I think over time other people have come around to this one too. It's called The Prowler. It's a good slasher movie, and uh, I own this one on 
Blu-ray. I, I don't know if I have this on DVD. I'll have to take a look. I might have the original DVD release of it. We'll take a look here in a minute. This one's a pretty good slasher movie, though. It has really good... There's some pretty good kill scenes. There's really good special effects. You can see that there's it's pretty violent. There's a lot of blood. It's an early 80s movie from 1981. And uh, this was released by Blue Underground in 2010. I'm going to pause it here really quick just to see. I, I believe I have this on DVD again as well. So I looked in my Blue Underground DVD section, and I didn't see it. But now that I'm thinking about it, I believe it was released on Anchor Bay the first time around. But I could be wrong about that. But I do have the Blue Underground Blu-ray of the same movie. If you're a, a, um, a minimalist and you don't like to have a whole bunch of movies around your place, you don't want to have doubles and triples of movies, and you don't want to have DVDs and Blu-rays of the same movie, you're better off just grabbing the Blu-ray, but I like to have both, and I think that looks pretty awesome. So that was the end of, or the first pile of Blue Underground. So now we're going to get into the second pile of Blue Underground, starting with Night Train Murders. And I've never owned this one on DVD. I do have this on Blu-ray, and I believe... You know what, maybe I do have it on DVD. Is this from, I believe Shameless Entertainment may have released this on DVD from England uh, 10 years ago or so. I, I believe I do have that one. But I've never owned the U.S. Blue Underground release of it. And I don't think I have the Blu-ray of this, if it even exists. I'm not sure. I haven't checked to see if this has a Blu-ray update or upgrade. But this is a movie from 1975. It's another Italian slasher movie from Aldo Lado. And this one was released in 2004 by Blue Underground. I picked this one up off of eBay. It was, it was used, but it was gently used. It's almost like brand new. Comes with a, uh, like a little pamphlet here with some of their previous titles that they released. Kind of like a little checklist, which I, I think is a great idea. They don't do stuff like this anymore. But you can go through and kind of put a check mark next to the ones that you own. And that way you can kind of keep up with which ones you still need to get and which ones you want to try to hunt down. It's a great, great idea. I wish they would kind of bring that back. There's the Mondo Kane box set. And that thing's really expensive and hard to to find when you do find it it's really really pricey but I'm glad that little pamphlet came with it and I'm glad to have the night train murders I think I only paid like five bucks for this plus shipping so it uh, the whole thing came to um, under ten bucks for I was like five bucks and four for shipping or something like that the next one, I own this one already on DVD, and I also do own this one on Blu-ray. Now, the, the Blu-ray, I believe, was released by, it was either Code Red or Scorpion releasing. I don't remember just now, but I do own it. And this is the DVD from Blue Underground. This is a kind of a sword and sorcery monster movie by uh, Fulci, Lucio Fulci. Another Italian, great Italian director. Uh, this one was released in 1983, and Blue Underground put it out in 2011. This is the unrated edition of it. It's not a really good movie, but it's uh, interesting, and it's entertaining enough. It's definitely worth a watch. If you're a Fulci fan, it's kind of cool to see that you know he tried something that was out of his wheelhouse. He was more known for his horror, and he wanted to try... Other stuff, which you can't blame a guy for trying, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. And he did some, a Western or two, and then he did a sword and sorcery type movie. So um, I applaud him for that. It wasn't his forte, but I, I mean, he gave it a shot. It's, it was worth a watch. Here is Mountain of the Cannibal God, starring the gorgeous Ursula Andress. 
beautiful woman. This one came out in 1978. This one is also unrated. Unrated and uncut and uncensored. Blue Underground put this one out in 2007. The next one is called Autopsy, starring Mimsy Farmer. And this is presented uncut for the first time ever in America. This is a British movie. This one came out in 1973. And it was released by Blue Underground in 2007. Ray Lovelock is also in here, and I think he's a a very good actor he was a very good actor he's passed now but um so here at the bottom i'm seeing it says it, it shows there at the bottom it was from 1973 come on work with me here focus there we go but up here it says 1975 and i thought this was british but it's italian so i was wrong about that the uh, city of Rome is rocked by a wave of violent suicides. And a young forensic pathologist who was played by Mimsy Farmer, she also played in Four Flies on Grey Velvet. That's a, an Argento movie. Racked with hallucinations of the living dead. That's what the interior looks like. I'm going to kind of keep this show moving. Here is uh, Nightmare City. Now, this one was also released by Anchor Bay. And let me see here really quick. I'll pull that out because I also have that one in this update video. And I'll just kind of pull it out really quick to show it side by side. I should have planned this a little bit better just to save time, but I didn't. And here is the Anchor Bay. Bay edition on the left. You guys will have to let me know which cover you like better. This is Anchor Bay. This is Blue Underground. I'm going to put this away to the side for a minute just to kind of um, focus here again on the Blue Underground stuff. It says it's one of the craziest zombie rides ever. This actually, to me, in my opinion, is, is probably one of the better, more entertaining zombie movies. I've seen this one quite a few times. I really enjoy this movie. This is the unrated edition of it. It's from 1980. It's an Umberto Lenzi movie. And uh, Blue Underground put this one out in 2013. And the Anchor Bay edition was put out in 2002. This one is very out of print. This one is still sealed. I, I'll talk about that later. But I got a really, really good deal on the, the Anchor Bay one. I'm going to keep it sealed just for collectible purposes, but uh, I got a really, really good deal on that one. This one I've never seen before. I'm not really into the erotica. Uh, this one was part of a lot that I bought. Uh, I think there was a five movie lot. I don't remember which movies came. I think it might be these last one, two, three, four. Uh, it's this one, the next three, and then there was one other one. I don't remember which. But this came with that lot, so I just I grabbed it and added it to the collection. But I, I really don't care much about this type of a movie. It's called Cecilia. It's a Jess Franco movie. You know what kind of movies that Jess Franco produced. It was always very highly sexual, very highly, a lot of nudity. Nothing wrong with that stuff at all. I, I you know, I, I think a, a female's body is, is beautiful. It's a work of art. But I'm just not really into the erotica. I'm more into like the horror and the uh, the crime, you know, the Italian movies, stuff like that. So this movie came out in 1982, and if you like this kind of movie, I'm not I'm not bashing you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my thing. That that's all. I mean, there's everybody has their own preferences, I guess. This one's called The Fifth Chord. This is an excellent movie starring Franco Nero. It's another uh, giallo film. Franco Nero is tracking a serial killer. It's another Italian crime. Polizio Teschi. Polizio Tesco means police in Italian. Polizio Teschi, or Polizio Teschi as some people pronounce it, 
is the it's kind of like the giallo genre of police crime movies polizio tesco polizio teschi is like gialli giallo i don't know i'm not making sense but i think you guys understand what i'm saying this movie was excellent i really enjoyed it 1971 and it came out has a, a really good soundtrack by ennio morricone um franco nero was excellent as the the detective who was tracking the killer i i always enjoy franco nero anyway in movies so this was right up my alley i think you guys should give this a shot if you haven't checked it out already arrow video has a nice blu-ray of this one which i also do own and i do recommend that one it's a really good blu-ray that uh, arrow put out this one's called the pajama girl case it's based on a true story and um, this one also does have a Blu-ray release from Arrow Video. And it's another Italian crime movie from 1977. And it's based on the infamous real-life murder case that shocked the world. Um, there was a mutilated corpse of a young woman that was found on an Australian beach. And a retired detective took on the case. Um, this is another good one. And the last one for my, I believe this is the last Blue Underground. This one is Deep Red. I have this movie many different times, but just look at that cover. That is beautiful. I own this movie a lot of different times on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K. Um, I may even have, I believe I have the VHS of this one as well. But that cover is just brutal and i had to get this one i was aware of this one for a long time i just now was the time for me to get it i guess this is a very very underrated excellent movie from dario argento in my opinion this is mm, i'll say this is number two for me for argento films i i think i'll always like suspiria number one but deep red is right up there deep red is um it's a little more brutal even it's a really good movie. If you haven't checked out Deep Red, do check it out. This is the full-length director's cut, too. So I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to get. Uh, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a break. And for me, it's probably going to be 20, 30 minutes. But for you guys, you're not going to even notice it. I'm going to come right back in a second, and we're going to continue on with the... This is kind of just a, a miscellaneous mishmash pile. Uh, there's some pretty good stuff in there, in my opinion, and uh, we'll continue with that here in a moment. Okay, so I took a nice little break. I also took a muscle relaxer, so now I'm kind of working against the clock here. So I put a lot of stuff away as well. So we're kind of dealing with, uh, I got a couple of PlayStation games we're going to talk about. I got this little pile of miscellaneous mishmash DVD movies. I got some Easter horror movies i got a little uh, i guess franchise from uh what's the name of the company again wild eye and then i do want to talk about protecting your movies so let's just keep rolling here uh, the first one i have in my miscellaneous pile is a movie that i've never owned this one is very infamous for being a rare title very pricey title uh, fortunately for me, this one had been on my wish list for many, many, many years, and I've been keeping an eye on it. I noticed that it's coming down in price quite a bit over the years, so I finally pulled a trigger on it. I got a really nice, clean copy of Fright Night Part 2. It does have the insert inside, and I actually have it in a bag right now, but I'll pull it out really quick and I'll show you the insert. And those of you guys who are collectors, you know that this is a very, very hard to find, a very pricey item. And uh, the better the quality, obviously, the, uh, the more pricey it can be. But I'm very glad to finally own this one. Here is the insert with the chapter menu. And then on the back, it shows um, some of the previous titles that Artisan had put out. This one has been notorious, I guess is the word, for being bootlegged. This is an actual 100% legit 
copy. Uh, it's not a bootleg, but this one is very well known as a, a bootleg. So just be really careful about that if you're looking for this movie. And the next one is called Ogre. This one is one of those movies that it's so bad, it's good, in my opinion. This is a, it's kind of a sci-fi-esque type movie. This is unrated. This one is, it's pretty gory. It has really, really strange CGI. You can see the monster there, the ogre. It, it looks a little cartoonish, but it's kind of effective, I guess. But there's a lot of blood in this movie. This is the unrated. I just I mentioned that before, but there it is again down there. Uh, this is a kind of a guilty pleasure for me. Like I said, it's uh, it's so bad, it's good, but it's actually pretty entertaining. The monster is a little bit ridiculous, but if you can get past that, you can enjoy that movie. It's pretty fun. And then here again is the Nightmare City. Not going to spend too much time talking about this one, other than let me see if I can find. This is the other one that came with it. This is also an Anchor Bay movie. This is The House by the Cemetery. I bought both of these together in a lot on eBay for $10 total. And they're both sealed. These are long out of print. And these are the original pressings. This is from 2001. And I forgot what we said. This one was from 2003, I think. 2002 actually so these are the first pressing from anchor bay still sealed in brand new mint condition i got these both together for ten dollars combined so that was a really good steal for me i was glad to grab those this one's kind of rare this one drives me a little bit nuts though here and i'll show you in a minute this one's called massacre it's a uh, joseph clark movie it's another low budget movie but it didn't have a very uh, a very high quantity release and it's a it's a pretty good uh kind of a backwoods maniac type movie uh this one was put out by brain damage films and you know that if you know anything about brain damage films they're pretty collectible but the thing that drives me nuts about this movie i'll show you here let me pull another movie out when you put the spine side by side it's upside down. Uh, I know that's a small gripe, but it's it drives me nuts. You can see the house by the cemetery has the title in the right way. You know, it's it's facing the right way. Massacre is upside down. I don't know why they did that. Maybe it was just a small mistake from the quality control team. They missed it before they started printing it, or maybe they did it on purpose I don't know but either way this is kind of a rare movie it's still sealed and uh, glad to have it though in the collection next one's called the night of the werewolf this is the special edition this is a Paul Nashie movie and Paul Nashie was uh, pretty uh, pretty famous for his werewolf roles that he played in his movies and uh, this is the high definition uh, transfer on DVD. This is the special edition. This is kind of, I guess, the, the second pressing of this movie. This is kind of the, the upgrade from the original DVD, but the, uh, this has since gone on to Blu-ray. So this is kind of like a, a lower quality now compared to the Blu-ray that is out, but it's still an upgrade over the original DVD that came out years prior to this one. This was released in, uh, well, the, the movie came out in 1980, but this DVD came out in 1997. I think a year or two prior to this was the first DVD for that. Here's a, another one that's very rare. Uh, this one's coming down in price quite a bit. If you know anything about this movie, you know that it's probably one of the more rare movies out there to find. Now this is a, I would not really consider this a horror, horror movie. 
it's more of a kind of a coming of age, uh, kind of a comedy horror. I don't know. It's a family movie for sure. And these kids here have to reunite this mummy with his lover before midnight or the mummy turns to dust, if I remember. Now, this has a remake. This is the original. This one's very, very pricey, very hard to find. It's put up by Echo Bridge. This one's still sealed. It has a remake, and it also has a, a Disney show about this. I believe it has a Blu-ray. So this is like the first one. Then there was a remake, and then there was a show after that that Disney put out. But this, I believe this is rated G. It says not rated, but I, I believe it's like more rated G than anything else. It's kind of like the Goonies meet a mummy type deal, right? So uh, it's a fun movie, though. So I'm glad to finally own this one because it's uh, it's very, very rare. Now back to this one. I showed you this one earlier. I, if you remember earlier in the video, I showed you the Blu-ray of When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. This one comes as a twin billing with Moon Zero Two. Now, don't think about Moon Zero Two at all. It's more for When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. This one was released on DVD, and it was recalled because on the back here, it says it's rated G. There are two different versions of this movie. There was a rated G version that's very family friendly. And then there was a, a rated R version that had nudity and it showed topless, a couple different topless scenes of some of these kind of cave women. Um, and it was four out or four minutes longer. The rated R version was four minutes longer than the rated G version. The rated R version was called the international cut. And the rated G version was the U.S. cut. So when the U.S. put this out, Warner Brothers put this out as a double bill. They didn't realize that they had the rated R version with nudity in it. And it's rated G. But And I guess the story goes that some woman bought this for her young son. And he popped it in and he kept watching the movie over and over and they couldn't figure out why. Well, finally, she went in the room and she saw that there was these topless titties jiggling and she complained and it was pretty quick. Um, and so they pulled all of these off the shelves and Best Buy had sold quite a few of these already. Not a lot, but enough that these are out in circulation. Most of these got pulled and, and they were never released, but you can still find some of these out there and they're. They're, they used to be very expensive. They used to be like $100 minimum to get this. I think I paid $15 for this one now, and it's sealed. So it's just a piece of physical media history, you know, and it's a, it's a recalled edition. It has since been released on Blu-ray. I showed it earlier in this video. The Blu-ray that I have, I forgot to mention earlier, has both cuts of the film on the Blu-ray. So you can watch the, the rated G version or the rated R version. And like I said earlier, the rated R version is, is four minutes longer. So if you want to see four minutes of, of jiggly titties, then hey, God bless you. Why wouldn't you, you know? But so that's a, a little physical media history there. Glad to own that one. Uh, also in this video, I showed you the Blu-ray upgrade to this movie, The Wood Chipper Massacre. This one used to be pretty, kind of rare. Not pretty rare, but kind of rare. It's not as much anymore. And since the Blu-ray came out uh, from Terror Vision, eh, this one has gone down quite a bit in price. And I finally pulled the trigger on this one. Um, obviously, when I watch it now, I'll be watching it on Blu-ray, but I just want to have this for the collection. This is the Wood Chipper Massacre. It's a shot on video horror movie from the 80s. What was it? 80, 81, I th oh, 89, 1989. So there you can see some of the still frames from the movie. The next one is called After School Massacre. Honestly, I don't know anything about this. I just grabbed it. 
like I said, I'm constantly searching for movies on my phone, on my computer. Um, I'm always looking for new movies, old movies, rare movies, good movies. And uh, sometimes I find movies that I've never even heard of before and I grab them. This one's called Blood Slaughter Massacre. I'm a big fan of like the backwoods slashers. This one was put up by Wild Eye. I haven't seen it yet. Don't know anything about that one. This one here is kind of rare. This is called Camp Fear, starring Betsy Russell. It also has a cameo from porn star Savannah. I don't know if you guys remember her from the early 90s. She was an up-and-comer, and she was actually winning awards. I guess porn has awards. I don't know if it... I was going to crack a joke, but I'm not going to. Uh, it was a pretty tasteless joke. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. But, uh, but unfortunately, in her... I believe she was only in her mid-20s or maybe later 20s. She was in an automobile accident and it disfigured her face. I think some glass cut her cheek or her chin and it was a pretty, a pretty nasty kind of a gouge. And the surgeons and, and you know, they tried to do the best they could to, to fix her, her beautiful face. And they just, it, it left a disfiguring scar on her face. And it really devastated her to the point where she took her own life because of it. And this was one of her last roles. Now, she was, this is not a porn movie. She was only making a, a cameo in this movie. The big star in this movie was Betsy Russell. She played in a lot of She was gorgeous, too. And uh, you guys might remember her from Tomboy, and she was in some other stuff. She was an angel. Um, this one was put up by Retro Media. And uh, this one was is uh, is hard to find, and uh, I was glad to finally pick this one up. It's called Camp Fear. It's a it's a slasher. It's a low budget slasher, uh, but it's pretty good though. I'm glad to have that one. This one I picked up on the on the cheap. This one's called Encounter in the Third Dimension, hosted by Elvira, and this is kind of a, I guess it's a documentary to kind of showcase some of the 3D effects that they had in movies. Now, this one came out a long time ago, almost 25 years ago. This came out in 2001. So a lot of stuff has changed, and there's been, you know, um, higher quality stuff that has come out since this. But this is kind of like a little time capsule, and I, I wanted to grab this one for the collection. I, I think this was only like 5 or 10 bucks, somewhere in that ballpark. Not very expensive at all. This one's called Beware the Woods, just another backwoods slasher. I haven't seen it yet, don't know anything about it, just wanted to grab it. Kind of a short movie, it's unrated, 65 minutes, so it's just barely over an hour. I love creature feature movies too, and I like shark movies and like killer fish and killer monsters in the water. This is called Red Water. Don't know anything about this one, I don't even remember buying this one. I was probably half asleep when I pulled the trigger on this. I honestly don't remember buying that one. This one's called Animal. This was put out by Scream Factory. This also has a Blu-ray release. I got the DVD on the cheap. I think it was only 5 bucks. I grabbed it. I will eventually get the Blu-ray for this one as well. But I just wanted to get this edition. It's it's the unrated edition. It's a, it's a monster movie from the uh, outback, you know, the backwoods and... Uh, I, I enjoy those kind of movies. And then here's another creature feature called Blood Glacier, about a, a, a bloodthirsty monster that they wake up that's hibernating in the in the uh, ice. Um, this one was put up by IFC Midnight. And uh, I, I really love movies that take place in these uh, icy, snowy, wintry environments. And... Uh, not just monster movies, uh, any kind of movie that takes place in the in the uh, uh, chilling winter scenes like this. I really enjoy those. So I was glad to pick that one up. I guess we'll just keep rolling along here. I got three Easter Bunny movies for the uh, Easter season, which is tomorrow. So happy Easter to you guys out there. The first one is called The Bunny Man Massacre. It says monsters are real inspired by true events. I showed a different 
bunny man in my last update. This is a different one. This one was directed by Carl Lindberg, and the movie came out in 2013. And it says here on the back, I think this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, horror comedy. It says, there are 1.2 billion bunnies in the United States, and this one's pissed. So this one is the first one from 2013 from Carl Lindbergh. And then in 2016, he released the sequel. Now, I'll, I'll admit I have not watched either of these movies yet, so I don't know anything about them. But I, I do like to pop these in from time to time. And I, I enjoy these silly movies just as much as I enjoy, you know, a straight up horror movie. Look at that scene right there. She lost all of her digits there. Well, almost all. She still has her thumbs. She'll be fine. Look at that, brother. So I'm, I'm glad to have these uh, Easter-themed horror movies. And then here's one that's... This is more recent. I think this one came out in 2021. This one's called Easter Bunny Massacre. And you know you can't really take these serious. Look at that. It still looks pretty good to me, and, and I'm sure I'll enjoy these. I'll probably be laughing more than anything, but hey, that's that's part of the fun of some of these movies. So I'm going to pause it here really quick, get something to drink, put a little bit of this stuff away. I got one more pile, and we'll talk about some protection, and I'll talk about my gaming channel. Okay, let's keep rolling here. I I always feel like I'm up against the clock here, and I I feel rushed, even though I, I don't want to rush. I want to make the video enjoyable. So this last stack here is all one franchise from Wild Eye. This is the Meat Hook Massacre franchise. These are all Meat Hook Massacre movies. I'll be honest with you, I had no idea these existed. And there's like a bunch of them. I'm going to go through these really quick. If any of you have seen any of these movies, let me know what I'm getting into. The name alone sounds awesome. And I'll be honest with you, that's why I bought them. Strictly from the title. I don't know anything about these. Um, so this is Meat Hook Massacre Part 1. Wild Eye Raw and Extreme. Unrated. These are all movies from Dustin Ferguson. You may know him. It's... These are very low budget, shot on video movies. This one came out in 2015 and it's only 60 minutes long. And that's what it looks like on the inside. You got the disc, you got a little bit of artwork on the inside. I like that, I think that's pretty cool. So that's Meat Hook Massacre 1. Here's 2. You can see that it's got some pretty grotesque cover art there. I haven't opened any of these. Now, this one came out in 2017, and it's 70 minutes long. Part 3 is called First Hunt. It is also unrated. It also has some very gruesome artwork there on the cover, if I can get this to focus. And this one came out in 2017 as well, so he started to shit them out real quick. Um, this one is 63 minutes. So he's still not on pace, though, for the Fast and Furious movies. I think they put like three or four of those out per year. I, I like to, to, to kind of goof on Fast and Furious. I think those movies are terrible. And I, I like to kind of joke about, you know, they're on like part 33 now. And they make like six a year. Here's part four. This one came out in 2018, 70 minutes running time. These look like they're pretty terrible. Here's part five, the final chapter. You can see that they're kind of going for a Leatherface type character, and they're going for a Friday the 13th type title. And this one came out in 2019, 70 minutes running time. I have some other Dustin Ferguson movies. You have to kind of know what you're getting into with Dustin Ferguson. I know he tries hard, but he just uh, he just puts a lot of movies out. He's constantly putting movies out. 
I think if he spent a little more time per movie, he would probably get better production. But who am I to? I'm not criticizing him. I'm just saying, you know, he's he's known to just kind of shit movies out. Here's part six, Bloodline. Not criticizing at all. Obviously, I'm a fan. I'm buying all of his movies. I have all these movies, right? Not criticizing Dustin Ferguson. 2020, this one came out, 66 minutes running time. Part seven is called Bubba's Dead. Twenty twenty one, seventy minutes running time. And uh oh, this one sounds like it's loose on the insert. I better not jiggle it too much. I believe this is. I don't know if this is part eight officially. But this one came out after part seven. This one's called Mayhem. And this one came out in 2022. 60 minutes running time. So I'm going to go put these away. I don't know why I bought these. I These are probably terrible. But then again, they, they might be a hidden gem. Uh, I don't know. If anybody knows anything about these, go ahead and feel free to comment. I don't care if you spoil anything with these. I don't even know if these can be spoiled. They're pretty they're pretty rotten already. So, all right, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so this part uh, is a little shameless plug for me. I don't ask for much on this channel. I'd never ask for people to subscribe. I don't ask for people to thumbs up. I don't care if you do either one. If you do, that's fine. I, I appreciate you. If you don't, I really could care less. Um, but if you could help a brother out on my second channel, which I will link down below, I have a gaming channel. And I play on a PS5. I also do have a PS4. The PS5 is backward compatible, so I really don't need my PS4 anymore. Um, I play a lot of open world and survival horror games on my second channel. I need to grow that channel. I'm only sitting at about, I think, 300 subscribers. I would really like to get that one over 1,000 just so I can start putting ads in my videos. And after that, I'll never talk about subs or thumbs up or anything like that again. I rarely do now. You rarely hear me ever talk about that stuff. If you could help a brother out, I'm going to leave the link down below for my second channel. If you could please go over there and hit that and subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff, that would help me out a lot. And I would thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I would hope to see you over there when I live stream and you can hang out and chit chat or you can just kind of watch in the shadows and just watch these games. They're pretty fun to watch. Uh, and that's it. I'm not going to talk any more about it. Thank you. And let's keep moving here with the video. Okay, now let's get into this last portion of the video and let's wrap this up. I'm starting to get a little tired here. And I don't even know if you guys are watching anymore into this video. It's a long one, man. If you are, I really thank you. Uh, but let's keep rolling here. So the protection I use... We, we will start with Dan G at Retro Protection. So Dan G is my guy for these hard case, uh, these hard shell cases that I put over my movies, over my slip covers. So he sells a lot of different sizes. And I'm going to kind of focus here. I'm also going to link it too, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to share this link down below. But you can go to www.retroprotection.com. His name is Dan. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to him at danG at retroprotection.com and ask him, you know, tell him, I have a, a Scream Factory slipcover. I want to order some shells. He knows what size you need. But there are different sizes. So I want to point this out to you guys because another question I get is, or a concern that I get is, some people say when they try to put movies into these cases, it, it, they're afraid that it's too tight, it's going to damage their slipcover. And you will if you use the wrong size. Now, this is a Scream Factory 
I just pulled a couple of these out just to kind of show you guys a, a demonstration here. Now, Scream Factory releases are much thinner than your Aero videos or even your Vinegar Syndrome. You can look, even with the naked eye, you can see that the Vinegar Syndrome, which is Madman, is quite a bit thicker than Alone in the Dark, which is Scream Factory. So you can't use the same covers for both. You could use the bigger one on the Scream Factory one, and you're going to have a little play in there. But if you try to put the Vinegar Syndrome one in a Scream Factory case, you're going to end up damaging your slip cover or your, your slip case. So just be very wary of that and be aware of the different sizes that they sell. And if you're not sure, reach out to Dan. That's who I get my stuff from. The more stuff that you order, the better deal you'll get. The longer you deal with him, the more you get to talk to him. He'll, he'll help you out. And he's always very friendly and he will answer any questions you have. There are no dumb questions. It's important to protect your movies. We pay a lot of money for this stuff. It's very important that you put covers over these, uh, these beautiful slip covers. You want to protect them for as long as you can. Paper products are just, uh, they're made to deteriorate. It's just the nature of the beast. Paper products over time, there's nothing you can really do. I mean, you can prolong the life of it, and that's what we're doing with these cases. If you leave them with no protection at all, they're going to fall apart very, very quick. You know, you're going to get scuffs, dings, scratches, shelf wear. You're going to wear down some of the print. But if you protect them, you can make these last for a long, long time. So I'm going to pause it here. I just wanted to kind of go over this type of protection. And this is Dan G. I will also link him below. Definitely look him up. Okay, and the last one is... These are the bags that I use. And when I say bag... Um, okay, so before we get too far into that i'm gonna kind of explain how this works so in the u.s a dvd case like this your average regular dvd case is 14 millimeters 14 mm that's the size of a u.s a standard u.s dvd case is 14 millimeters that breaks down to a little bit a hair under half an inch now, if you add a slip cover to a standard DVD, obviously it's a hair thicker. So you go from 14 millimeters, which is a little bit under a half an inch, to a 15 millimeter, which is about a half inch or so. Just a little bit bigger, you can maybe see with the naked eye. So certain slip covers or certain uh, protecting bags are harder to fit over a slip cover. And there's a reason why I'm bringing this up and there's a reason why I'm showing you these both. A 14 millimeter bag will fit over a 14 millimeter movie with really no issue at all. But if you try to put a 14 millimeter bag over a 15 millimeter movie, it's very tight. You're gonna be frustrated and probably you're gonna rip a half dozen bags before you get one on there. And then you're probably gonna be stuck with that bag on there because the next time you take it off to watch the movie, uh, you're probably gonna rip another six before you get another one on, okay? Don't, don't worry about this. I'm gonna show you this collection in a different video down the road. Uh, this is something different. I just wanted to pull this out to show you this little demonstration. So the reason why I brought that up with 14 millimeter and 15 millimeter is because there's a company now that I, I found uh, pretty recently. I found them through Amazon, but they actually have their own website, and I've been dealing with them. They're called Square Deal. Hold on, let me pull this around. They're called Square Deal Recordings and Supplies, and they're a family-owned business, a regular mom-and-pop shop. That's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of, people that I like to deal with, right? I, I like to see that kind of business succeed. I like to help to um, 
to to raise that company up or to to contribute to their business i like to spread the word about their their stuff and i i've been talking to these guys through emails because i had questions now i bought look at this i bought a whole bunch of stuff from this family i bought blu-ray sleeves I think I bought a thousand Blu-ray sleeves and I bought two thousand of the DVD sleeves. Now, let me put that out to the side. I'm not flexing. I, I think it's very important. I have thousands and thousands of movies. This is only going to cover a small portion of my collection, but it's a start. And these sleeves are a little bit thicker too and they're crystal clear they're almost like archive quality right i mean these things are crystal clear you can it doesn't even look like there's a a sleeve on there right now i mean look at that that high definition look to it um and these let me see does it show it on here these fit standard 14 millimeter dvd cases but they also fit the 15, and that's what I have on here. They fit 14 millimeter and 15. And actually, I thought it said that on here. It only it, it only says 14 millimeter, but please trust me when I tell you that these bags have a little extra, a little extra space, and I have not ripped one yet. They're a little bit thicker, and they're really crystal clear quality. I I don't care if you take my advice. It's up to you. I'm just putting this out there. I want. I would like to see this company succeed. Um, but this is just me trying to help the community out there. I don't get anything from this. They're not sending me free items. They're not paying me to talk about this. This is just legit me telling you what works for me and trying to help you, whoever's watching this. I don't care if you take my advice or not. That's up to you. Uh, I'm not forcing anybody to do this. I'm just telling you what I use on my stuff. And you can kind of see if, if it looks good to you. Maybe consider checking it out. If it doesn't, then go find your own stuff. I don't care what you use. Just make sure that you cover your stuff. Whatever you decide to do, just make sure that you protect your stuff. So with that said, I'm going to I'm going to take off now. I'm starting to get tired again, um, or a little more tired than I was before. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you made it this far, first of all, if you made it this far, thank you. Check these links down below. Go check out my second channel, gaming channel. That would mean a lot to me to get the, the subscribers up to a thousand. That's all I really want, just so I can put ads in my videos. Um, if you made it this far, put down in the comments section, hashtag protection. That will let me know that you made it all the way to the end. Even if it took you three or four sittings to get through to the end, if you made it this far, hashtag protection. And that's a wink and a nod to me like, yeah, I got you, bro. I, I made it all the way through your long shit. And I thank you. <laughs> all right, guys, take care. And... Check those links. Protect your shit. Good night. And on I read Until the day was gone And I sat in regret Of all the things I've done for all that I've blessed and all that I've wronged in dreams until my death, I will wander on.